Okay, so we've just seen a photo, quite evidently, of a waterfall. It was actually High Falls Water from the River Tees, which is our, our river that we actually focus our studies on. And, you know, our question was asking us, how do the processes, fluvial processes, create such a land form? Um, and actually, waterfalls are quite simple to understand how they form. However, it's the, the latter stages of their formation the steps that uh, students generally seem to miss. So we're going to break it into four stages with diagrams. What we've got in the first case is waterfalls are associated with erosion and then the upper course of a river. Okay, and they occur where the long profile of the river crosses from more to less resistant rock. Okay, so that may be, for example, like a, a very resistant rock such as granite and then passing on to an area of less resistant rock like sandstone. Obviously, what we're then going to get a result of that is that the less resistant rock is going to be eroded more quickly okay particularly by processes such as hydraulic action and abrasion it's going to create a step in the long profile of the river and that less resistant rock you can see clearly here has been eroded at a much quicker rate than the more resistant rock uh, before it as the water flows over that step it's going to increase in velocity Again, okay, gravity is going to have a, an effect on it, and the water's speed is going to increase. As a result of that, we're going to have really rapid hydraulic uh, action as that water plunges over the step into the less resistant rock below. Over time, that's going to create a very, very deep plunge pool at the base of the waterfall. Okay, you can see that in photos of waterfalls, there will be an area of water with the, uh, at the bottom that is really quite deep. Again, okay, that we refer to in geography as a plunge pool. Not only is it going to be eroding downwards, but also we're going to get an undercut and erosion is going to be going backwards, okay, eroding the back of the plunge pool. And it's going to undercut the more resistant rock above it. That more resistant rock may be in this case known as something in geography that we call a cap rock. It kind of sits on top of the less resistant rock. And that undercutting, as we can see here, is starting to create an overhang where the more resistant rock is unsupported above uh, the plunge pool. What's going to happen over time is that undercut is going to become larger and larger and larger until eventually the overhang cannot support itself. Okay, and that overhang will eventually collapse into the plunge pool. What's going to happen there is that the waterfall is then going to retreat to a new position. The process will then occur again and repeat and repeat and repeat with successive undercutting and overhangs collapsing into the plunge pool, meaning that the waterfall retreats upstream. As it does so, it leaves behind a steep-sided gorge in front of it. Now, that's the point that a lot of students forget to talk about, is the development of the gorge in front of the waterfall. And we could clearly see that in the photo of High Falls that we, we saw at the start of this video. What we've also got to remember is that collapsed material from the overhang is going to be sitting in the bottom of the plunge pool. And as it sits there, it's going to be moved around by the force of the water hitting it. And the plunge pool is going to be made deeper by processes of erosion, such as abrasion, as that collapsed material is moved backwards and forwards by the force of the water hitting it. That's going to increase the rate of erosion, increase in the depth of the plunge pool, and also increase in the rate at which undercutting occurs, and therefore the rate at which the waterfall retreats. So we've got a series of steps there. You know, again, like we've done before, using diagrams to help us to really clearly explain how the waterfall occurs, starting, if you remember, at our kind of long profile crossing uh, from a band of more to less resistant rock. That then creating that step in the long profile of the river, which the water is going to accelerate over and increase in velocity, leading to that rapid rate of erosion, creating that deep plunge port at the base of the waterfall. Also undercutting the harder, more resistant rock above that we know as the cap rock, which is eventually going to create a large overhang. And then that overhang eventually becoming unsupported and collapsing into the plunge pool, which over repeated cycles leads to the waterfall retreating and creating that steep sided gorge.